So this will be the second video of our discussion or <laughs> the asynchronous video discussion of how we fight for our lives. And I had mentioned as a hint that I would be talking in this second video about the end of the book. So if you haven't yet read the end, um, pause this video. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for you and read the end. Um, that'll be sort of the uh, preliminary task for you before you watch this video and then after you watch after you finish the book and watch this video then you can answer some of the discussion questions or comment about those portions of the book um, in the Google document so before I do that um, I want to talk about another element of the book that is this um, really difficult and painful through line um, of the men that the character involves himself with in certain situations um, that wish to do him harm or subconsciously do him harm maybe without wishing to. So, you know, I'm going to mention two of these men. There are a few others. But I wanted to bring this in as a potential motif that we could find in several of the books that we'll be reading and some of the poems that we'll be reading. And also just to talk about in queer literature, how uh, the role that sex plays in queer lit. And I know that's a huge topic. It could be the entire module, just talking about sex scenes. Uh, and I won't be reading them out loud, don't worry. It's just, um, I'll be talking about them and then I'd like to talk about them with you. But one particular aspect, and it will be hard for me to phrase because I don't want to mischaracterize or um, overanalyze this. It's more that I want to bring this idea into question so that we can tease it out together. So I'll bring it out here and I'll air it out in this video and then maybe we can pick that uh, back up in our discussion during the synchronous meeting. And that is this fine line between dangerous painful or abusive sexual situations and enjoyable, desirable kink, right? So those obviously there are different things, but they can overlap. And sometimes the character in this book, who is the narrator of this memoir, who is Saeed Jones, gets himself into situations where I think um, as a reader, I can see that the the character is on on the fence and then sometimes gets pushed into a danger zone but that that fine line is present more in in texts and queer literature that it might be in um, books that are not written by queer people or about queer characters and that that queer sex often has that tenuous line between uh, non-desirable pain and abuse and desired kink. Okay, so I know that's kind of a big assumption to be making. I'm not trying to make an assumption. It's more like I, a pattern that I'm picking up on in the books that we'll be reading and discussing and some of the other authors that we can discuss, um, including this book, as well as, uh, as I mentioned, some of the poems that we'll be reading. Um, and this is one of those situations where I'll say, I really wish I could assign more books for this, but it's a, so just a month long module. So the other book that I would say fits directly into this conversation, but that we I didn't have um, space to assign it would be Garth Greenwell's Cleanness. Um, so in Garth Greenwell's Cleanness, there's a really long, very beautifully written, heart wrenching, but also painful to read um, sex scene that is there are a few but one takes up quite a long chapter and it is it the character is pushed into the territory of danger but that the scene doesn't begin that way the scene begins as he willingly conscientiously with agency puts himself in this situation that he enjoys up to a certain point and then he is afraid and then it sort of blooms into like danger, self-hatred, judgment, and also physical pain. So um, that's another recommendation that I really 
can't recommend highly more highly enough, but that it's not officially on our list. So in this book, I want to point to uh, the chapter that I have the specific quote page number, but not the, it's chapter 15, and it begins um, December 31st, Phoenix, Arizona, and it's page one, the chapter begins page 127. Um, where he travels to this New Year's Eve party and um, the, the chapter takes place during and a, a little bit after the party. So I'm skipping ahead in the chapter a little bit to page 130, the quote um, two thirds of the way down the page. He finds himself intrigued by this um, role that he finds himself playing in this party of the most loud, most fun, and most sexy, but also he has a lot of discomfort about that and also just a lot of discomfort feeling out of place at this party. But he, he kind of takes this role and then amplifies it. So that's an interesting aspect of this chapter. Here, I'm going to skim some parts of this paragraph just because I don't want to make you uncomfortable reading it out loud to you. You can read it. But if I couldn't actually be the one myself, I thought I could survive by devouring him whole. The more straight, the more masculine, skipping a sentence, in spite of the man you say you are in the future I live, men like me are coming to conquer you and will take no prisoners. This is what I thought it meant to be a man fighting for his life. If America was going to hate me for being black and gay, then I might as well make a weapon out of myself. Then a little bit further on, page 135, again, about two thirds of the way down the page. Spoiler alert, if you haven't read this chapter yet, read that first. If standing over the unconscious body of a man who just moments before had tried to bash my head in is the closet head in is the closet I will ever come to feeling like a god I can say now that I understand how a god might look down at a mortal man and love him all the more precisely because of his vulnerability there was no part of Daniel left to hide from me I'd seen how much he wanted another man I'd seen the storm he'd been struggling his life his entire life to contain. I'd seen how much he feared and raged against himself. I'd seen so much more of myself in him than I'd ever could have expected when I first saw him. I didn't know real men hurt the way I'd been hurting. And one more tiny quote, the next page, um, 137, at the beginning of the next chapter, it begins with this really powerful line, which kind of echoes the events of the previous chapter. Who are you the morning after the most beautiful man you have ever kissed tries to kill you? And the morning after that, how about the following week? So this event, of course, is really hard and traumatizing for the character, for the narrator. And then it comes back again in a few ways when he's trying to write about it in workshop and then um, kind of haunting him just as a, a emotional and memory um, that pursues him. So that's one aspect where this desired situation of the, the man that he finds to be the most attractive at the party shows an interest back and they leave together, seemingly going to be a, like a success or a enjoyable situation that then goes awry and is, turns into a traumatic event that's even at first too hard for him to write about. In workshop. As a comparison to that situation, the other dynamic that the character, that the narrator gets himself into or, or chooses a, to be in is that character of the botanist who he meets online and then goes and goes for sex and then realizes that this man um, is using some disturbing racial slurs and actions and behaviors, but he goes back. So he hate, he, in a way he hates the man, 
and he doesn't like the situation. It makes him feel really uncomfortable so much that a few times he um, he leaves and then comes back. And in one scene, he is made to he is led to tears in the shower um, based on the, these uncomfortable situations and the, the awkward and racial dynamic that he's put in that makes him feel disempowered. And um, yet he goes back. So I'm just pointing this out. I don't want to analyze that dynamic. I'm just saying that that kind of feeds into this question of in this book and in other um in queer lit in general, often there's this really fine line that the characters are in in terms of their romantic and sexual dynamics of pain, trauma, abuse, and desired pleasure and kink. So that I'm just laying the groundwork for our conversation, hopefully, that we can pick back up in the document as well as um, verbally in our synchronous discussion. That's one aspect of this video. Now I'll turn to the ending in which I want to just bring into this um, conversation topic number two about the chosen family and also um, this kind of unconventional relationship dynamic that the narrator finds himself in with this stranger this older white woman that kind of plays a motherly role but it's she's not replacing the narrator's mother who has passed she's she's this like new mother figure of a different type like an aunt or just a good older friend that ends the book so they they um meet each other while the narrator is traveling ab abroad. Her name is Esther. And they just instantly find this kinship that builds and builds until they divulge to one another that they're both there traveling in Europe for a similar reason. And I'm just trying to find this quote. Yes. Page 189 as well, spoiler alert, read the chapter first or pause this video and go finish reading it and here I go. So they, they both find themselves in the same situation. Um, the last night of their travels together, they both tell one another that they're, they are traveling through grief, for grief and through grief that their mothers have passed. So he says he, to Esther, my mother died in May. That's why I'm here. I said, finally, still looking ahead. And she responds, my mother died this year too. And then we have in third person, or sorry, in the narrative, I wonder if we had in some way always known that we had this in common. Holding hands across the table, we took turns letting the words pour out of us. It was overwhelming, describing the women we missed so much words coming home like waves. It was freeing to just say it. Our mothers are why we are here. So I am just, I love this ending and I also had not seen it coming of course and neither had the character of traveling in Europe. You never know who you're going to meet. And I'm so curious to know your thoughts about why you think Saeed Jones ended the book this way with this seeming stranger rather than any of the other characters that he met through his schools and uh, our school adventures and romantic relationships, sexual relationships, even his family who um, in many ways he felt disconnected from and then reconnected. So why this stranger? Why end with this random older white woman who he connects with through grief on his travels? Um, one thought that occurred to me was this idea of chosen family, that she is not blood related, obviously, but that she find, she has a similar um, emotional experience that they're connecting over. But it still seems interesting, unconventional, and beautiful that it um, is the final chapter to end the book. So I want to know your thoughts about that. And I'll put some similar questions that you can expand upon in the written 
portion of today's quest. <laughs>